Hey everybody, welcome back to The Wolf Pit with another episode of Eating on a Budget. If you're new to the channel, in this series, I make really inexpensive meal recipes for struggling people and their families living on a budget. But budgets vary from family to family. Some families have enough money to put food on the table every night, but there's families who literally don't know some days if they're going to have enough money to feed their family their next meal. These recipes are extremely basic for the most extreme budgets, using very inexpensive basic ingredients, hoping that families are able to eat at least a modest serving of food at mealtime. Because when you're truly struggling and hungry, you're just grateful that you have something to feed your family. If your own personal budget allows, feel free to add more ingredients, make a bigger dish, or enjoy two servings. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a very simple, delicious, and nutritious family dinner that'll feed up to eight people for $6.82. So for today's recipe, try to find some marked down meat. And any kind of meat will work in this recipe. And I found if you go to the grocery stores between 8 and 9 o'clock in the morning, that's the best time of the day to find marked down meats. I know there's people out there that'll put their nose up to marked down meats, but honestly, it's just foolish. Meats are generally marked down because it's getting close to the sell-by date, and the sell-by dates don't really mean a lot. They're just estimates of how long the food should be on the shelf. If the meat looks okay when you buy it, 99% of the time, it is okay. But if it looked okay when you bought it, but then when you get home, you open it up and it smells funny or feels slimy, don't eat it. Take it back. The meat I'm using for today's recipe are these two pieces of baby back ribs, also known as loin back ribs, that weigh just under a pound each and were marked down to $2 each. So we have almost two pounds of meat for just a touch over $4. It certainly sounded like a good deal to me. What do you, the people, think? Then I got three 14.5 ounce cans of stewed tomatoes for 50 cents each. And finally a box of elbow macaroni for 99 cents. We're going to start by seasoning the ribs with salt, pepper, garlic, and onion. I also forgot to mention, besides being a budget meal, this is also a one-pot meal. So it's not only inexpensive, it's easy to clean up after. So in a large pot, over medium-high heat, add cooking oil. And then add the ribs meat side down. Now let the ribs brown for three to four minutes. After a few minutes, give the ribs a flip and let them go for a couple more minutes. And then add the three cans of stewed tomatoes. Followed by three cans of water. Now it's time to add some seasonings. I'm going to give this a little bit of Italian flair because that's what I was in the mood for. But you could very easily add some Mexican spices, barbecue spices, etc. to give it the flavor you like. You could add fresh frozen, or canned fruits and vegetables. What you add to this dish is only limited by your imagination. Don't be afraid to experiment with ingredients, especially if you're low on funds and you need to use what you got in the refrigerator or the pantry. So I'm just going to keep this simple and season with Italian seasoning, granulated garlic, granulated onion, and salt and pepper. Bell pepper and onion would have been great in this, but I didn't have any. If you have an open jar of olives, add a handful of those in here. You could add any kind of beans, sweet or hot peppers, an anchovy or two, a handful of raisins for a little bit of sweetness, leftover apple, leftover spinach or other greens, add a little bit of water to an almost empty bottle of barbecue sauce and add it in. I think you guys know where I'm going with this. There's nothing really off limits to adding to the pot. My father used to make a breakfast dish called garbage, and it was basically the same thing as garbage but it was slightly more appetizing calling something you were getting ready to eat garbage rather than garbage. It was basically anything left over in the refrigerator mixed with scrambled eggs in a skillet and that's what we had for breakfast. It didn't look very good, but it was filling and delicious. Sometimes it all depended on what was left over in the fridge. So once you've added the ribs and anything else you want to add to season the ribs to the pot, bring it up to a boil, then reduce the heat to medium low, cover, and then let them simmer for about an hour and a half or until they're tender. 
After an hour, our ribs are looking and smelling good, but they're not yet tender. So give them a good mix and then cover them back up and let them continue to cook until they're tender. After simmering for another 30 minutes, for a total of an hour and a half, our ribs are ready. Now remove the ribs from the pot. I've got to say for boiled ribs, those look pretty good. You could slap some barbecue sauce on those and pop them under the broiler for a few minutes and you'd have a nice half rack of baby back ribs. But that's not what I have in mind for these. So let's set them aside first and go get our pasta cooking. Now we're going to add the whole box of elbow macaroni to our tomato and pork broth. Then give it a good mix. Now let the pasta cook according to the instructions on the box. Now here's the leftover bones from the baby back ribs once we pulled all the meat off. And they don't get much cleaner than that. And then here's the meat. And that is definitely a whole lot more meat than I thought I would get from those ribs. Now here's our elbow macaroni and tomatoes and pork broth after cooking for about five minutes. So for the last four to five minutes, add the pork. I don't want the pork totally falling apart and getting stringy. Once the pasta is tender, check for seasoning. And it needed just a little bit more of everything. So we added more Italian seasoning, granulated garlic, granulated onion, and salt and pepper. And another good thing to add to this would be some crushed red pepper. Once you've adjusted your seasonings to your taste, give it one last mix and it's time to eat. And there you have it. At first, I didn't know what to call it. Pork goulash? But I didn't like that name. With ragu being a meat-based sauce, I'm gonna call it a pork ragu with elbow macaroni. Now this next step is totally optional, but since I had some, I went ahead and added in some good old cheap processed Parmesan cheese. And then it was time to give it a try. So I wanted to try just the noodles and the broth by itself. And they certainly looked pretty good. So into the old pie hole and down the gullet they went. And for that basic stock I made with the tomatoes, seasoning, and pork, the flavor really packed a punch. Then I tried another bite with the tomatoes, broth, and elbow macaroni. And it was even better. But one thing it was missing was a little pinch of sugar. So if you have some sugar on hand, add a little pinch. Just enough to equal out the acidity. Next it was time to try a piece of pork. And I was definitely not let down. It was super tender, very flavorful, and really moist. The way the pork turned out and the amount of pork I had in this dish was actually very surprising to me. I did not anticipate having nice big chunks of pork in each serving. And finally we tried a bite with everything, which was simply the icing on the cake. The simplicity, heartiness, and deliciousness of this meal was absolutely amazing. As a matter of fact, I ate a bowl of it while I was editing this video. In the beginning, I thought there were so many other items that could have been added to this dish to make it better. And maybe it would have been better if you did add them. But as this recipe turned out today, I wouldn't change a thing. The rich broth with the succulent pork, the sweet tomatoes, and the savoriness from the spices, all mixed together with the elbow macaroni, made this very simple, inexpensive, and very delicious meal that I would eat whether I was on a budget or not. And I'm actually kind of giddy and proud of myself for making such a hearty and delicious meal for $6.87. I truly hope that this video helps at least one struggling family have a good meal. If that happens, I'll be thrilled. If it helps even more people, I'll be ecstatic. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.